New research has revealed that fungi, you know, like mushrooms, barter and trade with other organisms like little stockbrokers. Basically, there's a whole economy of nutrients right beneath our feet that we are just uncovering. And yes, it can be pronounced either fungi or fungi, don't even start, and their classification has been difficult, to say the least. They're eerily more genetically similar to animals than they are to plants or bacteria, and things only get weirder from there. Fungi are possibly the most widely distributed organisms on Earth, existing everywhere on Earth from the North to the South Pole. They take elements like carbon that are trapped in organic matter, and through decomposition, they process and release those elements back into the ecosystem for other organisms to use. They can do this by releasing a sophisticated cocktail of enzymes and other helpful chemicals that allow them to break down organic material outside of their bodies so that they can more easily digest the nutrients. This is how fungi cause decay. But they don't just play an essential role as nutrient cyclers. See, all living things need phosphorus and nitrogen to live, but not a lot of those elements exist in forms that are ready for uptake. We eat plants and other things that eat plants to get enough of our phosphorus and nitrogen, but where do the plants get it? That's right, microbes like bacteria and fungi. Fungi that work with plants in this way can grow into structures called hyphae, delicate thread-like tendrils that can push into a plant's roots. This forms mycorrhizae, symbiotic relationships between fungi and the plants they glom onto. And for the record, mycorrhizae refers both to the kind of fungi that do this and the relationship between a fungus and a plant's roots. So it's a dual purpose word. Mycorrhizae can also connect to each other to form incredibly dense, expansive, and interconnected networks. Some estimates say there's around 200 meters of mycorrhizal hyphae in just one gram of typical forest soil. I mean, are you kidding me? But plants bring something to the table too. They have an ability that fungi do not. They can form carbohydrates through photosynthesis. So in exchange for essential nutrients, plants provide fungi with those tasty, tasty sugars. This worldwide network of nutrient exchange includes all kinds of microbes like these fungi and bacteria that play a similar role. And as a whole, this system has come to be known as the wood wide web. And we're not even to the coolest part yet. New research details just how these nutrient exchanges between plants and fungi actually work. It's like zooming in on a business contract. We thought we knew what it said, but then we took a closer look at the fine print and whoa boy, is it more complicated than we imagined. A research team in Amsterdam recently found that these nutrient exchanges may operate almost like an economy. When the plants have more sugars to share, the fungi give more phosphorus in return and vice versa. Both parties can punish or reward each other for good exchange rates and they can even withhold a store of a nutrient until the other party has a better offer. Building on the results of this work, the team wanted to go even further. They tagged each of the nutrients in question with a fluorescent compound, and then tracked the tagged molecules using a powerful confocal microscope. This allowed them to quantify the nutrient transfer from the fungi to the plant root, and for the first time ever, actually see the transfer of nutrients. They then began to study flow patterns within the fungus, making videos of the complex patterns of movement. You can actually see here that the fungus stops the flow of nutrients in one direction and reverses it, sending them back the other way. The scientists think that this is our first look into how fungi can redirect nutrients in response to their environment. It could even be that these oscillations of molecules represent some kind of communication. Could this be how these complex fungal networks transmit information? A new paper from a separate team used a database of over a million samples to visualize fungal relationships with their respective plants, revealing distinct patterns in biogeography. That means that certain areas of the world have a particular ecosystem type that supports specific plant-fungus interactions. This is a more macro look at the role that fungi play in ecosystems that are defined by their local climates. So research into the complex kingdom of fungi could help us better understand how organisms all over the world, both fungi and their business partners, have evolved and survived over millennia. If we pair this nanoscale look at the transfer of nutrients with a larger, more ecosystem level dynamic, we can better understand how these relationships might change as the climate becomes more unpredictable 
and what that might mean for the plants that we rely on as we look into the future. Do you want even more on the mind-blowing facts we're discovering about microbial life on our planet? Check out this video here and make sure you subscribe to Seeger to keep up with all your fungal news. It just might grow on you. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.